Hello, everybody. This is Sibbles and Bits, and we're here with a, a little bit of an early Christmas present. TRS uh, accidentally leaked their patch notes for the December update that's coming uh, this Thursday. Now, I should probably note that this is probably not final. It says uh, right here. That it was supposed it's supposed to be posted on the 16th. Obviously, it's not the 16th. And there's a lot of stuff in here that contradicts or negates other lines further down the patch note. So we're gonna try and avoid most of those cases. I've already read this and I've been thinking about it uh, during work all day. So I'm here to give my thoughts on what we have so far. I would also take note here. And they say to note, too, that uh, the Trello board and this list of fixes is not exhaustive, but uh, we at least have enough to give my impressions on this upcoming patch. They're adding offline campaign with progression. That's uh, very good. A lot of people are asking for that. New supply lines, roving merchants. Uh, Time-limited track added that uh, provides new unlocks to spend supply points on. Honestly, stuff to spend uh, supply points on right now, if you're maxed out, is obviously good. But the fact that it says time limited is a little yikes to me because it almost feels like a battle pass from a battle royale or something like that. It gives you fear of missing out, so you've got to play in order to make sure that you don't miss X, Y, or Z. We haven't seen anything about how this is going to work, so hopefully that's not the case. New card type burn cards. Now, on the roadmap that they released before the November update, they said that December was going to add a new card type. They had a little infograph of a bunch of cards that were lit on fire. If uh, you play lots of uh, roguelike deck builders like I do, uh, Slay the Spire, even a little bit of Gloomhaven, you probably decided for yourself that it was going to be like Exhaust, a very powerful card that you only get to use once, usually has incredible effects. They say that it can be played in each safe room to gain temporary effects like instant healing currency boost, increasing resistances or more. So they're basically like a get out of jail free card. Team's heavy on trauma. Just get rid of the trauma. We need money. Give us money. We need defense for like, say, a boss. So just give us defenses. Uh, they don't state... If this actually takes a slot in your deck, I kind of would like it to because that also makes it interesting as far as like deck building and the management of your starting hand because you probably want to have access to these like not necessarily the first stage, maybe the first stage because the first stage is the hardest because you don't have as many cards in play when you want to use it. You want to make sure that you have it on hand and do you load up with a ton of these in your deck and just decide that you're not going to give yourself any benefits? Could add a lot of strategy, honestly. Otherwise, it might just be that there's one of these in each safe room and you can choose whether you want to use it or not. Holiday seasonal event, decorations added to Fort Hope firing range, new skins, weapon skins, emblem sprays. Hopefully the sprays are good. I actually like a lot of the sprays in the game. Hopefully the seasonal character skins are all right. Honestly, I don't really use any of them. I do have uh, the custom swag on dock, but that's about it. Otherwise, like SWAT, I honestly don't care. If the seasonal skins are good enough, I might use them. But honestly, the original character designs are good enough for me. New non-burn cards. They've added quick slot cards. Now, someone on uh, the Stadia.net Discord pointed out that this doesn't uh, say negative health on the team quick slot inventory. That's probably another case of these are incomplete because... Uh, it is a little crazy. It makes the, the single quick slot a little irrelevant unless you absolutely needed that on top of this one. But they gave the negative 10% damage dealt to the two quick slot. It's Again, it's probably just missing. This is honestly quite huge. I'm probably of the minority that think that quick slots are absolutely busted in this game. And as such, Carly is very good because she's the only way to guarantee a quick slot. So being able to actually give yourself quick slots means that everyone is going to be able to invest in that if they want to. I'll just mention it now. They have moved razor wire up to the quick slot as well, 
So gaining more quick slots is probably going to be another thing that people want to do. A lot of ways that people like to do holdout missions is to just grab tons of razor wire, lay them all around, and then commons don't touch you, so the map's very easy. By moving razor wire to the quick slot, it not only opens the availability for cards like these, but it also might make people upgrade the quick slot and then realize how good quick slot items are, or they're going to realize how good razor wire is at lower difficulties. So it's honestly a win-win for me. Written practice, practice area added to Fort Hope. It says that they give you the ability to spawn into Fort Hope as mutations. This actually might be very interesting. The swarm statistics and the game statistics are not exactly one-to-one, -one, but it could still be pretty good just having your friend be a dummy and then trying out weapons on them and then figuring out stuff like time to kill, how much damage you're actually doing, have them run around and try and hit them while they're on the move to see if you can hit the weak spot. This is actually more than just, you know, like learning how to play in Swarm. This actually has PvE implications as well. Bots that accompany the player in campaign are randomized. This is actually quite good. Each bot has their own deck that they go through. And the fact that there is bot Carly with defibs, bot ha I don't even know what bot Hoffman uses. I've never had a Hoffman leave my game. But being able to see different bots and be able to play to their strengths is actually quite interesting and maybe it'll make people not want to always have a uh, walker with his uh i think he gets medical professional at uh, map six or seven but it also might make people just keep reloading checkpoints until they get by walker stat tracking now enabled in training um okay ultra wide improvements is pretty good Fix a couple exploits for duplicating offensive utility items. Kind of a problem in matchmaking, but with the changes down below, I don't think that this may necessarily be a problem. I mean, obviously, if they fixed it, then it's definitely not a problem. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is that it's good that they fixed it. A majority of the people who resorted to the bomb duping did it because they wanted to play the game. Not that they thought that it was necessarily fun. because. The three people that I ran with that did it do not enjoy doing it because it's not fun. And then fix an exploit that allows players to select one card instead of duplicates. This could be one of two things. There's two different card dupe bugs. And if it's the one that I'm thinking it is, this is pretty good, I guess. Again, if you were doing this, it you're just taking the game from yourself, in my opinion. Players start with Max Emma at the beginning of a run. This is actually quite good. I don't know how many times that I joined pubs and nobody wants to do an ammo exchange. And I mean, I suppose on the first stage, it doesn't matter. But when you get to the later acts, having all your ammo at the start is pretty crucial. Friendly fire damage no longer increases with each weapon tier. That's interesting. I suppose it prevents you from like killing your run late game. Healing efficiency now improves temporary healing, which is a huge change, honestly. It might actually bring healing efficiency back into the meta, because right now it's sort of like an early game stat and that's it. If you have sources to scale, then that actually give you reason to invest into it. Unfortunately, right now there's a bug with healing efficiency where it doesn't affect anything you get from cards. So if they didn't fix that, then this is... Healing efficiency now applies to pills. At least it would make it so that if you're scaling healing efficiency, you don't have to feel like you need to buy bandages because it's the only thing that will scale off of healing efficiency. And if you buy med kits, you're just going to waste all that healing efficiency on them anyways because you're going to heal them for like 200 plus. And you just use med kits for trauma heal anyways. Added one additional card to Acts 2 and 3. I suppose they're noticeably harder than Act 1. But um, allowing your build to come online sooner. Handyman's pretty hard. And that's map 2. So being able to have... It would be 5 cards at that point. You almost have your build online. That'd probably be pretty good. Then Act 3. Hardest thing there is probably T5. I don't know if an extra card is necessarily going to save that. It'll be interesting actually to see how much of an impact this makes. The remaining research boxes will be highlighted after a certain amount of time has passed on Dr. Rogers Neighborhood T5. This is huge. It's always that somebody gets caught out and has to drop their box in a place where the team hasn't designated that a box is supposed to be dropped or you're in pubs and like nobody checked 
say, upstairs bathroom. We don't know how long this is, but the fact that it does highlight after a certain amount of time means that you're spending less time in T5, and the more time you spend in T5, the more likely you are to die. So this honestly might solve T5 just by itself. Speed card updates. Uh, basically, they've nerfed almost every speed card by 25%. Some cases are different. That's the same nerf they did to melee, and melee is just fine, so I don't know if this is even enough to stop speedrunning. But like I mentioned before, people who speedrun just honestly want to play the game, mostly. So if it drops down to like, say, 10% of people are speedrunning instead of like 40% on Nightmare, this is a good change. Well, not this change specifically, but the changes that they've made to the difficulties. And this is just like, okay. It's, uh, some notable instances, Rhythmic Breathing now has less stamina. And no longer has the negative slow resistance, which is pretty good because that negative slow resistance pretty much made this thing unplayable. Um, Run Like Hell loses its 12% movement speed buff for 3 seconds whenever you get hit. This is still pretty good as far as map traversal, but... It's less of a thing as far as, like, weaving in between things. Because before, like, negative 200% accuracy, most builds didn't actually care that we're using this. So this actually makes it a deficit. Speed Demon nerfed slightly. 6% was a lot. I'm not going to say that it wasn't. But 4% is also still a lot. And you still get the 35%. Reload speed. Speed demon's still just fine. The one that I find weird is the fact that Pep in Your Step just got its movement speed bonus reduced by a bit. You need, like, commons in order to activate it. I would think that it might be more fun if it was a stacking buff that was, like, say, 3% up to 5. And so you had to actually, like, keep getting headshots while you're moving in order to keep up the buffs. That would feel a little bit better than just, you know, 8%. Stimulants, though, refactored, no longer gives movement speed. Now it gives 20% stamina regeneration, and then they buff the reload speed and the swap speed to 15%. This is crazy. Swap speed is reload speed if you're using admin reload. It also allows you to enable power swap. Reload is also obviously pretty good if you're not doing that. It's firing rate for uh, chambered weapons. And stamina regeneration is like reload for melee. So all around, this just makes you do everything more. The only problem with stimulants is that it lasts 30 seconds. This is a very good change in my opinion. Obviously, like 10% movement speed was ridiculous, but as far as I was seeing on Reddit and YouTube, people weren't using stimulants for movement speed, which is crazy because it was giving 10%, which was the same amount as pep, pep in your step for 30 seconds. It was pretty cracked, honestly. Combat card updates. Uh, basically here they're talking about they nerf speed running so they realize that we have to actually fight things so they're giving us some more options to fight things as well as the fact that they are nerfing specials cold brew coffee is ridiculous so before this was um like 100 percent increased stamina regen some people actually use that but um i think almost everybody's going to be using this like we just said with stimulants right weapon swap speed is reload people who use admin reload you got some reload speed in here which again is fire rate for chambered weapons you got ads speed which is always a good stat to have and then a little bit of extra use speed which if you guys have ever played with and without carly you know that use speed is good being able to perform actions 20 percent faster pretty good especially on act one also think about it this way the one that gives you ads speed is 30 percent the basic card weapon swap speed that basic card is 25 percent use speed the closest thing that you can get to is uh screwdriver so screwdriver gives you 50% and some stamina. So obviously this isn't exactly half of that card. And then of course reload speed, reload drills is 20%. This card is worth like three and a half cards. If you're using like just two of those stats, this is worth it. Combat training. They removed the bullet penetration. Basically, it seems like instead of making one card just better than the other, 
with a different deficit. They want to actually have each of the bullet cards do something. And this is what I'm talking about with contradictory uh, text, by the way. We've got combat training here and here. This is remove bullet pen, added flat bullet stumble, and plus melee stumble. This one just says that the card now says 5% bullet damage plus 25% bullet stumble. Um, I'm pretty sure that only one of these exists, and we don't know which one, but this top one, plus one bullet stumble, so that applies to each shotgun pellet. And shotguns already stumbled pretty well. You could probably take, like, even the 870 now into Nightmare with this and stumble things. And then, of course, five melee stumble, which is, um, I suppose this applies to everything, whereas heavy hitter requires a weak spot hit. But this also stacks with heavy hitter, so this might enable the stun locking that we were used to before the melee nerfs with the bat. And that would make this worth it. They state that on Nightmare, the stumble resistance has been reduced on uh, specials. So we might actually be able to stumble lock now. You probably wouldn't be able to pick it up until like map 3, maybe 4. Because you also usually want meth head for the, uh, the attack speed and the stamina efficiency. But we still got it, if it works. If it's 20% bullet stumble and 5% bullet damage... Okay, that still helps shock and stumble. Energy drink. Stamina reduced to 15% was 40%, but trust me, you're going to be alright with that. They removed the damage resistance, so it no longer kills you. Added weapon swap 25%, move speed while firing 50%, slow resistance plus 10. The slow resistance alone is probably going to make this the most used card in the game. I don't know enough about how slows work in this game to know if this is enough to make a huge difference. All this basically has to do though, is make it so that getting hit by one common isn't a death sentence. If two commons hit me and I still die, that's fine. But if one common clips me due to server desync and this doesn't save me, it's gonna feel pretty bad. However, it does also have these other stats to it. Which makes it even more ridiculous. Like, stamina 15 and move speed while firing 15% is already good enough. I have a build guide that I'll probably make after the patch at some point about uh, utilizing move speed while firing. I call it the Super 90 Slider. Basically, just to give you a gist, there are three different classes of weapons in the game. One of them I call lightweight weapons, which deal less damage, have less range, but as they upgrade in rarity, you get usability stats like ADS speed swap speed and the move speed while firing you can take a white super 90 and move faster than you do walking while firing you upgrade it to green you're almost sprint speed and then of course weapon swap speed again admin reload i women um, tooltip now includes all secondary weapons. I honestly wonder if that means melee weapons too. And ammo chance increased to 3% was 2%. Now, at Steady.S Discord, we recently found out that this is actually 20%. I'm guessing somebody put a decimal in the wrong place. Hopefully they found that and fixed it before they made it 3% because ammo spawning at 20, 30%, let alone 20% is not, <laughs> it's not okay. Like, basically, anybody can be Hoffman, and Hoffman is super Hoffman. Um, and then, of course, now it has a chance to spawn Molotovs. Hopefully not at that, again, bugged 30%. If it's at 3, this is already pretty good. Because it uh, counts all secondary weapons. You don't have to not use the Tech-9. So if you do an Infinite Tech-9 or Infinite Belgian... You have access to highwaymen, and sometimes you spawn Molotovs. Molotovs aren't as bad as people think. They're actually quite good. Uh, and while we're at talking about that one, let's go down to Mugger. Ammo chance increased to 3%, was 2%. Again, same thing applies. Now has chance to drop Razor Wire. Um, so Mugger was already better than highwaymen because obviously you don't have to use ammo to make ammo. So it's a support skill, technically. And even at 3%, Get dropping more ammo for your team is good, and having a chance to drop Razor Wire. Razor Wire is like, it's so good on melee because you can use it to space your enemies, especially 
when you start getting to the charred and bile ridden, they'll hit the razor wire. You scooch up, kill them, and then just back off. And they just do their thing like at the end of the razor wire. Meanwhile, the razor wire is stopping all the other commons from getting to you. When commons are slowed, they're less likely to desync and uh, hit you when they shouldn't. Again, like razor wire and melee is like peanut butter and chocolate. Patient Hunter now takes less time to get to a stack. But since it's multiplicative, if you have the option between an extra 10% bullet damage and Patient Hunter, I almost think that you go Patient Hunter now unless you are no ADS. 0.75 seconds means that you get to that one stack faster. The longer you're in ADS, if you're using an LMG, you're going to be ADS for quite a while. All it takes is 2.25 seconds and you have a full 30% damage, that's uh, Chem Courage. Just for ADSing. You don't need to use pills, you just have it. Patient Hunter's always been good. This just makes it more usable. Power Swap and Power Reload. Reload window and Weapon Swap window has been increased to one second. This is very good. If you're a trash gamer like me, you probably never got these to pop off. One main reason behind that is because of the 0.75 window. Most guns fire for 0.2 or 0.3 somewhere in there seconds. So this looks like 0.75, but it's actually like 0.4 or 0.5. You have to react to the low ammo click faster than you have to react to getting picked up by mom's talents. But it's longer now. We should be able to hit it more often. Praise be to the trash gamers like me. And unfortunately, power swap can no longer be stacked. Again, I never used it because I could never get it to go off, but... Power swap was incredibly powerful. I don't think that it needed to be removed entirely, but there was exploits with it. I thought that it was very fun that uh, power swap builds were the only builds that actually wanted a broken magazine. It was pretty janky. I'm hoping that this is just to stop the exploit, that they'll fix it and then bring this back in some fashion. But regardless, 10% from one power swap is still pretty pretty good but it's a lot of overhead of you know listening for the low ammo click and then swapping over and using another gun it's basically just a play style thing now if they reduced it down to like say three percent maybe i don't know i think that this should be multi-stack and not removed uh i completely skipped over large caliber rounds when we were talking about large uh combat training uh again all the bullet Cards seem to be trying to do different things. Large caliber rounds is now 2.75 bullet damage, same as before. Bullet damage damage? What? Um, and plus 200% bullet pen. So basically, it's a buff. And then it's got a penalty removed, so it's like a super buff. If you're looking for pen, this is pretty much the only card that gives it now. But it gives it more than it did for silver bullets. If you're using silver bullets for bullet pen, you lost 2.5% bullet damage, but you also get all that money back. It wasn't a lot of money loss on silver bullets. It was five per mutation. And if you were just focusing on clearing trash, you never killed anything, any mutations anyways, because you just left that to your team. But the 2.5% bullet damage will lead to some missed breakpoints, but having the extra bullet pen on bills that actually want it is probably worth it in the long run. Going down here to Silver Bullets, still 10% bullet damage, and now it gets 15% to range fall off. Okay, range fall off is actually pretty disgusting. I probably should have spreadsheeted this, but just to give a little bit of napkin math explanation here, we're gonna actually say that we're using line them up, right, for 10%, because that's a lot easier for me to calculate with my potato brain. So what that does, is that takes this value here and then adds 10%. So this is going to go three clicks to the right. Oh, by the way, I should probably mention we're on steady.net. This is a community-made mechanics and interaction site. Details, written stats, some mechanics, and damage charts for all the weapons. You can select rarity here. If you don't know about steady.net, I'll leave a link in the description. Go over here and check it out. It's amazing. It's not done. Uh, they still don't have, uh, you know, recoil, accuracy, bloom, stuff like that. But there's a lot of good information in here, and you definitely want to check it out. Anyways, back to this. So we're adding 10% to this, which is three clicks, right? So where I would normally be doing 
9.4 damage with white weapons. I'm actually doing 10. That is approximately 5% damage increase. Which is okay. Basically, if you were already one-shotting at this range, you get it a little bit further. At your range 2, obviously that clicks out 10% as well. It doesn't click out by the 1.5 that we would do here. This also gets affected 10%, and this gets affected 10%. So what uh, range extension is actually doing is it's pushing this out 3 clicks. This is going out 4 clicks. This is going out five clicks. So it's going to push this graph to the right and then stretch it, which means that that linear drop off between this point and this point is less gradual. So even on this example here at medium range, we're doing 7.4, now we're doing eight. That's a 10% damage increase. On certain weapons, you'd have to math this out yourself. This will allow you to keep your breakpoint. You have enough extra damage at, at effective range that now at a further range you can still one-tap commons. At most guns, the medium range, you are gaining 100% to 150% of the effective range's damage. Basically, so for 10% on line them up, you're gaining approximately, depending on the gun, 10 to 15 percent damage at the third range you are gaining 150 percent to 200 percent of the effective range's damage so in this case 15 percent to 20 percent then of course obviously like past the new effective range uh maximum range you're not going to gain anything or inside so it's really a situational thing if you realize that you should be one shot in commons, but at a specific range that you feel is close, you're no longer getting that one shot. Extended range on a card that also gives other benefits, like 10% bullet damage to help you make that break point in the first place, is very potent because it's going to make you more consistent and save you a lot of ammo in the long run. Silver bullets gives you damage and 15% fall off. That is honestly freaking nuts so a lot of builds took this just before the 10 percent bullet damage and they didn't care about losing the five copper whenever they killed a mutation and if you set your kill box up right you get that extra uh, bullet pen that's kind of nice if you're using it for the bullet pen you used it because it was the best bullet pen now large caliber rounds is the best bullet pen if you're using it for the bullet damage it's still the best bullet damage and is absolutely crazy at medium to long range line them up also has that increase uh, here it's called range fall off it's extended range recoil control a little bit of bullet pen honestly 25 percent isn't really a lot i wouldn't even write home about it but also gives you ads speed 25 percent no longer requires ars ars never used to line them up because 100 percent bullet pen on class specific was not worth it when you could have just taken ridiculously more damage with silver bullets. Marathon Runner no longer disables sprint. Uh, they note that this is to enable kiting. That's absolutely true. I was talking earlier about the Super 90 slider. We use Marathon Runner in base game. And now we get sprint. That's huge. Going back to this. Sprint speed for all weapons is 600. Lots of people take cards like Mean Drunk. Because it gives them massive damage in the splash. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll just take cards in order to like, counteract the fact that I can't sprint. If you're not using Berserker, you need 50% movement speed to bring the machete. Well, I guess all melee weapons, you need 50% movement speed to bring it up to 600. So without Berserker, you need to use like, what, three, four cards right now? And they're all getting nerfed? It was very inefficient, but now we don't even have to worry about it for Marathon Runner. If you're doing Marathon Runner with melee, you back up, tall bait the tall boy slam, then you can actually just run in there and start hacking. It's going to be dead. If you're using lightweight weapons, you can use the mobility 
while firing to sort of evade and circle strafe. But during events where you have to run, you can still sprint. So you're not giving up your mobility out of combat for your mobility in combat. This, again, this is crazy. I think everybody's going to start using Marathon Runner. Steady Aim and Tunnel Vision have now added uh, Patient Hunter-like buffs, where they gain stacks of a buff every 0.75 seconds, 2.25 seconds total, that give recoil reduction and weak spot damage. I'm not sure if 15% is a lot of weak spot damage in the long run, but I mean, if you consider the fact that people who are using this also have access to Shredder, like LMGs, uh, LMGs definitely want the recoil reduction. Um, you may be able to use the recoil reduction with the ranch rifle. Honestly, just having more options. And these are cards that already give you ADS speed. So you get into there and start getting your stacks faster. We'll have to try these out, maybe all together, and see exactly how ridiculous it is. I think LMGs are going to be very good this patch because of the fact that they now get 15% weak spot damage, recoil reduction, just for firing. Like, they were already pretty good when you factored Shredder and Patient Hunter. The team ammo card. This is the upgrade. Now gives 1% increased damage. A little weird. I mean, this is bossing damage. The amount of these that you would have to grab in order to make a breakpoint on commons. You have so much ammo that you don't care about making, meeting breakpoints on commons. So I guess this is a bossing stat. Well fed. Remove 20% stamina efficiency. 20% stamina efficiency is a lot. A lot of cards use that, and uh, if you know me, you know that I hate not being able to sprint. I don't like cards that give negative stamina efficiency. Will this make me take well-fed? Not necessarily. It's a better buy, at least. You would um, almost always want to buy this in the wild. I believe well-fed is 600. 600 copper to give everybody 10 health. That's actually a lot. And you don't have to like sacrifice your stamina efficiency for it. Healing card uh, updates... A bit spicy one in here. Uh, let's just go straight down to experienced EMT. Y'all shouldn't have known it was coming. No longer heals trauma. The trauma heal was not intended. And they've buffed other cards such as fresh bandage and safe room recovery to mitigate losing EMT. As well as adding um, a free FAC in Nightmare and Veteran. Uh, and since there can be two FACs per stage... We're technically gaining like 60 trauma recovery, which isn't the same that you would get from experienced EMT. But just explaining it like that should tell you exactly how ridiculous EMT was. It is basically for the cost of one FAC, you gave everybody an FAC. Experienced EMT was more broken than old grubbers, in my opinion. If you disagree, leave a comment down below. It's been refactored though, and increases stamina and stamina regen by 10%. This is actually still very good. Is it as good as old EMT? No, but it'll still heal somebody for 10% of their maximum life on the first item you use on them, which is equivalent to 40% healing efficiency against most builds. And on top of that, the stamina and stamina regen. This is this card is now basically half of cross trainers minus the movement speed. So for having this on your team, you get another little burst heal for ten percent. Especially your melee users will enjoy having extra stamina and stamina regen. But you're just better at uh, scenarios where you have to run. I don't know if it'll cut cross trainers out of your deck, but if you had a second stamina card, that might cut it out of your deck. And then everybody on your team gets to save one card. I don't think this is going to be used in every medic build now. But I still think it's going to be used in some builds. And if you can actually use it correctly, I still think that this is pretty potent. Ammo Mule no longer disables support items but lowers movement speed by 5%. 5% is actually quite significant if you consider the fact that uh, we're also losing speed everywhere up top. But for 75 to all ammo types... 5% movement speed, I don't know, that may not be enough. It was sort of balanced in the fact before where you could solve ammo for the entire team with one ammo pouch because you were worth like two ammo crates to them. And so the trade-off was that other people had to heal you. 
Now we get to heal ourselves and we move 5% slower. Press bandage now heals 15 health at the start of each level. And trauma recovery to 15. So we got like a 50% buff and a little bit extra. With the extra FACs, this might be enough. But compared to safe room recovery down here, safe room recovery now heals 15 health and trauma recovery up to 7. I don't honestly know how fresh bandage compares to safe room recovery at all. Um, I suppose if you absolutely need it after taking safe room recovery, you take fresh bandage. But if you need the 15 health, you take safe room recovery. If you need the trauma recovery, just take safe room recovery and help everybody else out. This is per team too, per uh, team effect. So if two people have this, You've already got fresh bandage and you're actually gaining more health. I mean, you would definitely buy this out in the wild, though. It's just, it's a little weird. Group therapy, heal increase to 8. This is a ridiculous change. Uh, so, group therapy and poultice are already some of the most efficient heals in the game. They both heal 20, which is effectively 80% healing efficiency in the early game. Group therapy did a splash heal, while Poultice did an upfront heal over time to one target. Most people went with the targeted heal because that's how most teams take damage. But group therapy was still also a defense card. Wasn't as good as Charitable Soul in the late game. But in the early game, it still also topped everybody off so that they didn't take extra trauma damage. Now that this is 8... I almost think that you always grab group therapy. If you ever have an instance where you have to heal two people, before you would heal one, heal the other, they would both heal 20 each from poultice. If you have group therapy, you heal one, heal the other, everybody gets 16. Uh, it, it's almost like group therapy is as powerful as safe room recovery and poultice is fresh bandage. I still think people are going to take poultice, but I think that group therapy is too efficient to not take first. I don't know. We'll have to see how that plays out. Life insurance. Life reduced to one was to remove copper loss. Now reduces team in cap trauma by 15%. So this is another ridiculous buff. I don't know if, I don't think I've ever seen anybody walk into a match with life insurance. Sometimes people will take second chance. They never have plus two lives. The copper loss wasn't really a big deal, but this is now another case of, like, say, second chance gives you five health, but this gives team in-cap trauma 15%. Now, the five health is upfront more useful, but if you get in-capped and you have this, in the long run, it could mean more health, especially if someone else has this. If all four people have this, you reduce in-cap trauma by 60%, which means that you're only taking... Six trauma on veteran, and they changed uh they changed nightmare, so we only take twenty trauma there, so sixty percent would mean that you take eight trauma. I don't know if uh people are gonna start grabbing these, but if everybody starts grabbing these in the meta, it's gonna get ridiculous, especially if you start factoring in that uh medical professional gives you back a life, so if you start using this in nightmare can actually be net positive by a landslide by using defibs in nightmare and since you only take six you would only have to use it every other down so when you actually die someone could revive you you'd be at a net gain and still gain three trauma well, you would still take trauma to get there but it would negate the fact that you had died twice i don't know if that necessarily makes it worth it to a lot of people but uh, in builds where I take second chance just to gain health, I probably would take life insurance instead just to help out the team. Because in pubs, people get downed a lot. Needs a many. Health penalty reduced to 10. I'm hoping that's percent. Was 20%. Um, if it's negative 10, rip mom. The only thing that she has is her starting kit then. And the one time quick revive. But... If Walker's on the team, anybody can take this, and you've got the team lives. Even at negative 10%, like, that's that's 100% worth it. But at least if it was 10%, it 
it wouldn't be negated by Walker's passive or getting two health intel's energy bar, stamina regen increased. It was literally worse than cross trainers. Basically, if you needed cross trainers and an extra like five health and twenty percent stamina regen, you took this. Uh, at thirty percent, it at least stands apart. I don't know if ten percent regen is worth the movement speed and stamina, but to some people it might be. Hyper focused adjusted movement penalty to negative forty percent movement speed while shooting or melee attacking was negative ADS speed. This is a good change in my opinion because no ADS builds got this card for free and it was just straight up better than the negative damage resistance one. It was also, I believe, better than the no ADS card. It was a little weird. And if you're actually using it to per se snipe, you usually aren't moving and shooting at the same time, so you don't really care about this. Wooden armor no longer increases explosion damage taken. Um, obviously, like, I don't know if anybody takes wooden armor. <laughs> uh, the thing that causes the most trauma is, like, fire and acid. Because it hits you so much. It's at least a step in the right direction. Like, not getting blown up by your teammates. Most explosion damage is called by, caused by friendly fire. I don't know, I'll have to try it out, I suppose. But I, I don't think that negative explosion damage taken is going to be enough to push this one. So, I mean, like, you take double damage from fire and acid, which already tears you up. But you're not going to get as much trauma. Eruption boss cards will no longer appear at the start of an act. Um, honestly, this is sad boop for me, because I, for one, liked our double boss and one boss overlords. I think that the game is most fun when you have to overcome obstacles unpredictably, and it was honestly a blast. And, um, I mentioned double bosses because Hag no longer spawns on the Fog Corruption card. So, the only way that you're ever going to get a double boss is if you spawn a boss challenge on a map that already has a boss, which... Maybe five maps in the whole game. It's unfortunate, but I know a lot of people hate it, so I suppose it's good change. Um, a bunch of aim assist stuff. That's good. I don't know if this is good enough, but console players say that playing the game is weird. Don't know exactly how to explain that, as I don't understand it, but this helps them out. That's great. Bird health reduced to one. Was ten. This is good because there are still players, for some reason, that think that Molotovs will instantly kill birds at white rarity. Even though the game's been out for like almost two, three months. This is how it was in beta, and ho hopefully we're back there. Flash grenade damage was reduced. Guessing that's because they didn't need it to kill birds. Flash grenades do kill birds, but they say it's five. I don't exactly know about that because... Flashbangs kill birds. So either this wasn't working correctly or the birds weren't working correctly, but regardless, they're they should all be good now. M16's damage increased to 16. Um, two base damage is a lot in this game. And it's a burst fire weapon. The M16, in my opinion, is already pretty good at uh killing like the annoying specials like Stingers, Hawkers and such, and Exploders, Wretches. So if that was already your detail, like you killed things faster. I think that that's pretty good. A lot of people don't like the M16 though because it doesn't kill tall boys and it's very ammo inefficient versus trash, which uh, common written. I don't think that this is going to help that at all. Maybe if you're a madman and you use pen on your M16. Or if for how, somehow the 16 damage to meet a breakpoint on a common, then you could actually have pseudo pen, I suppose, and shoot through, shoot, kill one common. The second bullet kills another common, and then the third bullet may kill another common behind it. If it's able to make meet that breakpoint, actually, let's just take a look. So if they're adding two damage, this isn't even accurate, right? Because uh, it would be two to the base damage, and then it would gain more as it goes up. Um, let's, uh, sixteen times one point one equals times one point one. 
Okay, so if you can get probably at 19, so blue rarity, you just need about, you need over 25% damage, and you can body shot ferocious commons. But when you get to purple, you get to this point, you probably only need 20% damage at purple. And then you would be able to do that. And then there is a little bit of pen, so it would carry through on um, monstrous and probably get you two kills. Two, maybe three kills. So actually, that's that's pretty good. First M9 Beretta damage increased to 12%. Not really willing to do the math on this one because it's so much lower than 16. But I don't see 12 being good enough for the M9 Beretta. The M9 Beretta suffers because it's a burst fire weapon, so you want to use it against mutations, but it doesn't do enough damage. It does have the crit bonus, but I don't know. Maybe this takes that to a point to where it can actually kill lights like uh, stalkers and such. But it's still going to be ammo inefficient versus commons. And it can't quite kill like wretches and exploders. So that just... It's in a weird spot. It needs... I don't know. It needs something, in my opinion. Uh, Razor wire is now a quick item. We already mentioned that. MP5 fire rate increased to... I'm guessing that's by 50%? Which is pretty good. I would take 600. So that pretty much makes it the same fire rate as the Uzi. It's identical to the Uzi. It's literally identical to the Uzi. Just has a smaller clip and better recoil and accuracy. Even has more damage. Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, MB5 users. Uh, drinking good tonight. That's me. I always ask the dev why he has an anti anti MP5 agenda, and I suppose this is my uh, my uh, Christmas present. Except. 870 fire rates reduced to 0.4 instead of 0.55 is also my Christmas present. I much prefer the the 870 due to the fact that it's got a tighter spread and a larger magazine over the TAC-14. I understand that it does significantly less damage and range, but it just feels good to use. And if it's firing faster, it makes it better for shotgun bruiser and applying shredder. That's crazy. Like, I already thought the weapon was good. That doesn't mean that it's good. Because, again, I'm a trash gamer, but that's <laughs> pretty good. Uh, increased combat attack width on the combat knife. If they increased it to the size of Bash, this is actually good. Combat knife actually does some significant damage. It's able to kill lights. So, weapon weapons and builds that don't have a lot of weapon swap speed... Or poor, like front, uh, like close range ADS, like sniper rifles and uh, LMGs. If commons leak past your front line, or you come face to face with a stalker, a combat knife will solve it. Now you do lose all of that stumble, and I don't think that that's worth it because if a an exploder or a reeker gets within close range of you. You don't want to be stabbing that with a knife. Having your fists and just punching it, stumbling it, and running away is much more effective. This may actually make it much better. Lightweight stocks of uh, blue and purple rarities have been nerfed. Again, same movement speed nerfs that they're doing up to, uh, above. The purple stocks were very noticeable. It's basically, it was worth um, unlike help, but it, it was very good. It's still very good at 10%. Difficulty specific recruit. Uh, recruit players get more damage resistance, more money when they lose, uh, basically half their life when they lose, and most of their trauma when they lose. Uh, veteran. Sleepers no longer call hordes. I highly contest this. 
basically they say here that they want to cause less of a disparity between the various difficulties that isn't much of a, so that there isn't much of a jump between recruit to veteran to nightmare. If players have to learn that sleepers aren't okay in nightmare, they're learning this in a much more intensive environment than just in veteran. And with all the other buffs we're getting, a couple of extra hordes is the least of our concerns. Our player damage is being increased to 20%. Basically, like, Recruit gets a 50% more damage, we're getting 20% more damage in Veteran. That's a ridiculous amount. I was just talking about how the M16 only needs about 25% damage in order to pen through commons. At blue rarity, you... You almost get that for free. There's also a lot of weapons where Walker's 10% is enough to push it over to a break point, and we just get 20%. And then base health increase to 115%. Basically, we're Super Walker. Everybody's Walker, and Walker is better Walker. I wonder, actually, if Walker's damage bonus is multiplicative or additive with this. If it's multiplicative, then he's going to actually be quite a beast in Veteran. Anyways, we also get more ammo. Okay. So they want people to buy team ammo upgrades and then they just give us two for free. Brahma heals per safe room is plus five. This is honestly marginal, but we lost EMT. And then of course the extra first aid cabinet. This is a lot of trauma heal. You can heal four tra sets of trauma in a map if you get two FACs. One in the prepper stash and one on the map. We'll get to it later, but basically... Down in the AI changes, they made it so that a lot of the instances where players felt the game was not playing fair have pretty much theoretically been removed. Then on veteran difficulty, we're also getting buffs. I don't quite agree with it. And then, of course, continues healing you and giving you more a little bit more money. This honestly isn't a big deal. In Nightmare, we get one use of FACs. Specials deal less damage. This is bonus damage, not that they're dealing half as much damage as they used to. They're dealing 35% more damage than they would in Veteran. Commons are dealing 50% more damage than they would in Veteran. And normally that was like pretty much double. So less incoming damage. The... Extra trauma from in-cap was reduced to 5 from 10, so we get 20 trauma every time we get in-capped. We have access to the FACs. Um, stumble resist on Nightmare is 25%, so basically it was reduced significantly. And then of course their health bonus was halved as well, not just their damage. So they're going to be easier to kill, and then of course if they have less health... Uh, they're just alive less, so then they're going to deal less damage to you. Um, we have continues now in Nightmare, including a Trauma Heal. We get our Pity card. We get some ammo. Then, of course, this is another case of extra ink. This is what I was mentioning before about how it's weird that we have contradicting lines here. We don't know which one this is, but even if it's 7, that's much less in reduced in cap than we uh, took before. Spawning. So during Endless Hordes and Back-to-Back -back Hordes, all uh, Hordes Special Ridden are limited to 2 of any given type and a maximum of 4. This used to be... Sorry, this used to be 6. So we're encountering much less and multi-locks or instances where specials can lock down multiple members of your party because of their composition are going to be reduced significantly. It can still happen because you could have two crushers, two stalkers. But at least in normal situations, that's not going to happen. So if multi-locking was one of your primary concerns, that's been mostly reduced. Again, mostly. Some levels have different spawn scripts, and this is endless hordes and back-to-back -back hordes. So it does not encounter instances where you make, like you encounter a boss and then also activate crows. You're going to run into some problems. Edit a horde special ridden cooldown. 
So this is going to double instances of multi-lock, or uh, sorry, negate instances of multi-locks, but it's not going to be foolproof. It could still happen. Time cords made to have a longer minimum resume time of 60 seconds. So time cords like uh, the normal card or like the tall boy hordes card, etc., etc., they waxed and waned, and sometimes they could be 30 seconds, and on a tall boy horde, sometimes it took 30 seconds to get rid of them, and then they had another horde. And then if you triggered a horde while having a timed horde, it was possible to have the timed horde triggered too soon. Exactly, like, pretty much like I said. You could have crushers spawn here, you activate a horde. These are different, so you could still have multi-locking occur. But, for the most part, it's not going to happen. Roaming special max count now 4. This is pretty much ones that are on the map. Again, multi-locking can still occur if there's crushers just, like, out in the map. And while kiting from a crusher, you run into another crusher that just so happened to be spawned there at the start of the map. That can still happen. But, there's less of them now, so it's less likely to happen. Reduced chance for all Tallboy variants on Veteran and Nightmare difficulties? Well, I guess we're going to have less Crushers in general. But that means, I don't know, like the other commons are, or the other mutations are also pretty deadly. It's just the fact that Tallboys had so much health. But I suppose you don't need to answer them as easily or as readily. It means you... The chance of them doubling up is less, so you need to carry less frags. It might make things significantly easier. Reduce roaming special minimum distance spawn to 30 meters. Again, like, they're idle outside the map, so this doesn't really matter. I guess what it does do is, if they're at 30 meters, the average, uh, like, gun noise is 30 meters. So if they were within 20 meters, they could spawn, you could fire, and it would call them to you. Whereas now, you're on like kind of the edge. Makes suppressors a little bit better, I suppose. And of course, wandering, but these are the specials that physically spawn during the match. And their spawn distance is 10 meters from 5. Um, sorry, this is going to make spawn blocking much easier. I don't know if their maps are actually big enough to handle this, but you should have less cases of specials spawning on top of you, unless, of course, you're running really fast, doing a whole bunch of stuff, and the server desyncs and is confused where you're at, which is where you get those instances where specials will literally spawn in front of you, because you're literally moving too fast for the server, and it doesn't know where you are. I had written no longer instantly explode, and it was explosion damage? Oh. So then I guess they got rid of explosion damage on uh, wooden armor because Blighted Ridden no longer <laughs> explode? I don't know. Sleepers will more accurately connect with their targets. I mean, it's good that it's working correctly, but that sounds bad for us. Oh boy, and Bruiser hitbox is more accurate and their weak spots are easier to hit. And they pretty much say here that they want you to be actually be able to hit them from the front if uh, you have a precise weapon. Which is kind of good. I mean, means you no longer have to like bait it around in order to get your sniper to hit it. But I mean, it's a welcome change. Just seems like we're we're hitting tall boys on literally every facet here. Then the following changes um, make their attacks a bit more forgivable to dodge. Um, overhead smash radius reduced. Less ability to turn during burst reversal. So I guess you can uh, sideswipe them better. Decrease crusher squeeze attach distance for squeeze attack to 200. Was 300. This is actually pretty good because um, it was weird that it would grab you beyond its animation range. I called it the extendo arm. Vomiter's effective range in meters reduced. Tracking and ramp up time to adjust to work better. I Tracking and ramp up time adjusted to work better. So it's got better aimbot, but it's, if it, I don't know exactly what this means. And will rotate slightly slower and track the target for slightly long. Okay, so that must be what this means. So it's less range, but it's more persistent. 
Like it's actually, it rotates slower, but will try and hit you longer. I suppose that prevents it from like tracking one person, deciding that it can't hit them anymore, and then going back for you. And then starts at a lower ver velocity now, so we get more time to dodge. Explosion's explosion radius is now visible to the ridden players. That's good for Swarm. Okay, so the Hawker, arguably one of the most deadliest enemies in this game. Projectile speed reduced, so we can actually dodge it. Cooldown for a miss is now 8 sec. Actually, its cooldown is 8 seconds regardless of if it misses or hits. Um, new players uh, would pretty much get killed by hawkers because even if it one player gets hit if the new player does not free the player or kill the hawker in two seconds they now get hawked and then it just becomes a domino effect and eventually the whole team's dead because of one hawker they were they cause so many wipes if players aren't paying attention in pubs on top of that the initial damage was reduced to five was ten this is actually I don't like <laughs> I don't like this because uh you could actually um when they are monstrous they would proc true grit and protect you from the damage over time. Now you have to take like I don't even think taking negative damage resistance would protect you from that. Yeesh. Hag health reduced by about ten percent. That's, it's good. It means that she spooks easier. And then, of course, like, up above, um, Nightmare Health was reduced, so she spooks easier in there. I think my napkin mask said that um, somebody with white grenades and bomb squad can spook the hag by dealing a quarter of her health, like, almost with one grenade. So if you were having troubles with hags and Nightmare, this is pretty much solved. Obviously, if you're in Veteran, she has less health, you have more damage. It's pretty much a frag grenade solves her. Well, I guess four, because you'd encounter her a couple of times, but one frag grenade would get rid of her. Then, of course, she's got an increased weak spot multiplier. This is actually quite significant in the long run. That honestly means that um, if you use the stun gun strategy or a flashbang and give your her back to your sniper, they're just going to deal a lot more damage. This 0.25 is actually a significant amount in the long run when you consider all your uh, damage modifiers that you've got on the on your end. Stinger projectile cooldown while perched is increased. The machine gun stingers are gone. Because, uh, yeah, when they get Predator mod, it pretty much was a machine gun. You, you had to kill them, otherwise they would kill you. Swarm PvP, sorry Swarm players. Controller updates, sorry, I think this is pretty much exactly what they put up at the top. I'm hoping so because I don't know enough about this to talk about it. UI UX, we can now duplicate decks in the deck manager, that's great. Cleaners being pursued by a hag when they'll see a corresponding screen effect, that's good. Because sometimes she changes targets and then it causes woes if you uh, aren't taking care of her. Um, added an option to doggle blood, vomit, mud, drench in options menu. That's pretty good. Jukebox tracks now controlled by music slider. That's amazing. Now I don't have to be deafened every single time. Um, update your drivers. Bug fixes. A uh, big one here. Fix buckshot bruiser. Reducing normal health while temporary health decays. Um, honestly, this wasn't a big deal. But every time that I vouch for Buckshot Bruiser, people would tell me that it's bad simply because it uh, makes you lose life, and it did. But uh, if you were actually using, like, the skill, this rarely ever happened. But uh, we'll see what people say now when I try to defend this card. Bench the Fallen now no longer shows infinite offensive items. That's good, because it didn't actually give it to you. Fixed Blood Donor card not playing its sound effect for the correct duration. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that's Inspiring Sacrifice. Fix Field Surgeon card not applying the proper amount of negative use speed. If this means that they upped it to negative 50%, this card's almost unusable, in my opinion. 
it's still the one healing efficiency card that you would ever need. Negative 50% use speed is a lot. A lot of people will say that you can just use a card to offset it. I was really hoping that they would just make the text say negative 25%. I'll have to test this out and see if it's negative 50, but I'm already not a big fan of it because of the negative 25 use speed. It just causes too much strain on the party, honestly. Makes your team slower. Um, you can't run objectives. And when things start going bad, you can't like revive people as well. And I guess that's it. I hope to be having a lot more videos coming out after the December update. I've got some beginner slash intermediate guides, starting with uh, health and recovery and ammo and how it spawns and breakpoints, as well as probably going to be updating a bunch of build guides for the new update. I hope you guys can look forward to that. If there's something you thought I missed in these patch notes or you disagreed with something that I said, be sure to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, if there's a vast difference between these patch notes and the actual patch notes when they launch, I may mention those when they come out. Otherwise, I'll probably just mention them in their relevant videos when I make them. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.